Well, let's dive deeper into that AI trade and what could be in store next year. Check out the top performers in the NASDAQ 100 for 2025. Western Digital, Micron, Seagate, all names on the hardware side. On the other hand, major underperformers include software names like Adobe, Workday, Datadog, with investors skeptical about AI monetization. So should investors expect a catch-up trade on the software side in 2026? Joining me now is Lo Tony. He's founding managing partner at Plexo Capital and a CNBC contributor. Lo, a lot of people cautious about 2026 being that great for software here. What will it take? Well, first, thanks for having me. And to piggyback on what Steve said, I think I just want to mention that what's important about Apple is that even if their AI execution stumbles slightly, their economics still protect them. And that's very different from a company like Meta. And that difference, I think, is, is the real story if we dive in in particular to the Manus acquisition. Maybe we can even walk through a few definitions that I think are important to frame the context and to look for things in 26. First, let's think about training. That's a one-time build cost. But where we're moving is to inference, which is the ongoing operating cost of actually running AI in the real world. Or you can think about it this way. Uh, training creates capability. Inference determines profitability. And inference economics, which is a concept we've been writing about extensively this year, is the study of really who pays for AI every time it runs and whether that revenue scales faster or slower than the cost. And this is good context to talk about Apple, Meta, and inference economics, I think, are going to be important to watch for 26. But, Lo, I think there's a potential bottleneck here that we don't talk enough about, and that's workflow and human culture. There are certain ways that people are used to getting things done and there are certain ways that people have organized their data centers and their data. I'm not sure that enough companies are in position to scale their AI use just because of how they're structured and how they do things uh, enough in 2026 to capture the full expectation of the market uh, in what this software is going to do. It's a really important point, John. I appreciate bringing that up because when we talk about the cost to build out infrastructure, Typically, we're talking about the cost for training infrastructure, which is very GPU dependent. Again, we can go back to, to Apple. And what I look at with Apple is the fact that even if they stumble, they really have minimal exposure to this concept around this massive build out because they're not really spending money on large scale build out. It's really happening by the third party apps. So AI can almost feel free to the users because Apple's not exposed to those marginal inference costs, right? So really, you know, Apple benefits from AI without being on the hook for the inference cost. Microsoft, um, their exposure is a little bit lower, um, but with the model from Microsoft, inference is pretty much just built into their existing model of seats, licenses, and contracts. So those absorb the inference cost. Now, Google is really interesting because of their vertical integration. We've talked a lot about their TPU chips and their TPU chips are within one data center that manages all of the services that handle billions of users, handles Google Cloud, it even handles the developers that use it. And then as well, it also does a dual purpose with AI, both handling a lot of the training for the models as well as the inference. And so when we think about Google's business model, they don't subsidize inference, they tax it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to think about Meta, you know, that's where there's some exposure because Meta really monetizes attention. And so, you know, the inference costs can rise faster than monetization unless their pricing power improves. And I think that's why, one of the reasons at least, that they made the, the Manus acquisition and, and what Meta is trying to do here with Manus is, you know, Manus is good at making AI into tasks and workflows. So it kind of helps Meta to fix their balance sheet um, in a few, or fix overall financials in a few ways, right? right? They fixed the balance sheet with the Blue Owl transaction, which took 30 billion off their balance sheet. This Manus acquisition kind of helps the P&L by making some incremental revenue. And, you know, look, Meta's been working on their own chip. They've also been talking with Google about potentially using TPUs. Yeah. So that could help cash flow.